Well, teens keep turning to the next best thing to get a better high, but we're not talking about pills or pipes here. Most recently, several teens across the country have died after using the Freon from air conditioners to get high. There's also bath salts, which is what they are called. There's not there's nothing like uh, the sound. They, they're not really bath salts. That's just what they call them. The drugs can uh, make users paranoid, can cause hallucinogenic, uh, hallucinations, and in many cases, they do outrageous things while they're high on these. So this morning, we're talking a little bit more about these extremely dangerous drugs. It's a news trend. We've got Amy Hanoyan Fontana with Poison Control. Good to see you, Amy. Good to see you. So let's take the Freon first, and then we'll get to the bath salts. Sure. Uh, I mean, we were all shocked when we heard about this. Freon is, is what's in air conditioning units and refrigerators and things. Tell us how this all got started. Right. So Freon is a gas and it's under pressure. It can be found in refrigerators, freezers. Um, it can also be found in air conditioner units, whether that's a window unit, a central air conditioner in a house, or a more industrial unit in a big building. Um, so you will also find it, find it in propellants as well, like computer air duster mm -hmm. has a Freon-like um, component to it. So so what people are doing is they are <clears throat> able to release the gas in some way and huff that or inhale that purposefully. And they, they will get a, um, a toxic effect from that, a toxic mm -hmm. high. What does the high feel like? The high is similar to alcohol, but more euphoric mm -hmm. and more short-lived. Um, and we really worry about sudden sniffing death with inhalants of any kind and especially with Freon. Um, so you could die the first time, the tenth time, or the hundredth time that you inhale Freon or any other propellant or volatile uh, solvent. And uh, what happens is uh, the catecholamines are sensitized around the heart and you have this heart arrhythmia and this adrenaline, adrenaline release and it forms, it's like the perfect storm. Mm. And it for and it the perfect it, storm for death. Perfect storm for sudden sniffing death. That's right. Well, yeah, I, I think I've read that the lungs can freeze. It can cause brain damage. Absolutely, especially in chronic use, it yeah. can cause um, liver damage, renal damage. That's kidneys, uh, brain damage, uh, all kinds of uh, neurological, physiological problems. I'm always amazed at how people find these things out. Did somebody somewhere, sometime, decide to just huff Freon and said, hey, this kind of gets you high? And I mean, uh, it's just, where there's a will, there's a way, yeah. right? So, uh, you know, there's, if, if, they, if they figured it out somehow, they figured it out somehow from the internet, from friends, um, peers, right. that type of thing. How long does the high last? <clears throat> the high is very short-lived. We're talking about minutes. Mm. So you would need to keep inhaling or keep huffing in order to maintain a high like that. The other thing with Freon we're worried about is frostbite injuries because it's cold and under pressure. Right. When you release that, uh, you can get, you can burn in terms of a cold burn, your lips, your eyes, your face, your hands, whatever's sure. near the gas at the time. Let's get onto these bath salts. They're not something that you would put in your bath to take a bath. That's just what they call them, and they have a variety of different names. And tell us what these are and how they're ingested and what kind of damage they can cause. Okay, so bath salts are not your Epsom salts that are in your drugstore. Um, it's a slang drug term. Let's get that straight first. Um, secondly, they look like bath salts, a kind of crumbly, crumbly crystally mm -hmm. look to them. They can be snorted through the nose. They could also be smoked or injected um, or eaten if you wanted to. <clears throat> and they contain mephedrone or MDPV or methylone. Uh, and really what that is, it's an amphetamine-like substance. So that means everything revs up, everything increases, your heart rate. And we're getting reports of people with prolonged psychosis, uh, like you said before, hallucinations, yeah. um, seizures, and then of course, you know, heart attack, stroke, that type of thing. And can you still get these bath salts in Connecticut? Well, officially, they are illegal right now. Okay. Um, they are a controlled substance, a Schedule One drug, which is the most controlled of the drugs that we have in Connecticut and federally. Um, they're illegal to possess, illegal to possess or sell right now. Um, that doesn't mean that they're not still out there.
Okay, and Amy, if somebody wants some more information, where can they go? It looks like we've got the uh, website there and you've got a phone number and also an iPhone app, I understand? Yes, we have an iPhone app uh, to find your local poison center. We have our 800 number, 1-800-222-1222 if you need help with the poisoning. Okay. And of course, our website, poisoncontrol.uchc.edu. We've got some great fact sheets out there. Amy Hanoyan-Fontana. Thank you, Amy. Appreciate it.